And this is the Royal Enfield Classic 350. And you can see the antique nature of it back from the old war days. Just a beautiful, beautiful bike. Royal Enfield Classic 350. It's a 2022. I've owned it about a month now, maybe a few days less than that. And 350cc, 20 horsepower. And you can see the engine there. Just a really good looking bike. Um, what else can I say? Every day I ride this bike, no matter where I go, I receive compliments. I have people beeping at me, hollering at me from their vehicles. I stop at a traffic light and someone always has something to say. Um, if you're one of those people who likes the attention, this is the motorcycle to get. This is by far Royal Enfield's most attractive in their line of bikes. This is the classic. It comes in nine colors. There are two military models. This is the Desert Sand. Uh, one out of the two, the Desert Sand color. And wow. Um, yeah, I mean, if you like the attention, you buy this. I've owned several motorcycles and I've owned scooters. My last bike that I just traded in for this was a Piaggio scooter that had more power than this. It, 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 could, it could go from zero to 70 in seven, eight seconds probably. It took right off and there is a part of me that misses it. It was an automatic transmission. They're basically automatic transmission motorcycles. Before that, I had a Honda Rebel 1100, and that had Honda's DCT transmission, which, in other words, you had the option to put it in automatic, and you just turn the throttle and go. So that's something that I miss now with this model. Uh, this shifts very well. It is only a standard transmission like most motorcycles. Again, I do miss the automatic transmission nature of it. And there are just a couple of quirks that I should probably go over with you. One of them being fourth and fifth gear. They're the two highest gears. So one of the things that kind of frustrates me a little bit about this is when you get to fourth gear, you're at higher speeds, you're you're kind of at that in-between stage as you, well, as you're accelerating and you're kind of indecisive into whether to slide it up to fifth gear or keep it in fourth. So the frustration is, is if I leave it in fourth, I feel like the bike is working maybe a little bit harder than it should, but that's probably just a mental thing with me. And then if I throw it into fifth, I almost immediately feel like it's lost the power that fourth was giving me, if that makes sense. So at, at those in-between stage or those in-between speeds, if you will, uh, it's kind of hard at times. Or it's just kind of difficult to know at certain moments which is the more comfortable gear to be in. Obviously, as I accelerate more, I just throw it up to fifth and then it will certainly take off. This in-between stage with fourth and fifth gear usually takes place if it's really windy outside, the wind's just blowing from every direction, and you combine that with some of the uphills in the roads, you're going up a hill or something, so that can just be a little bit of a frustration, the motor being what it is. But if you were to read or watch any sort of review video, 
this particular model, again, it comes in nine different colors. Uh, this particular model just rave reviews. There is very little to criticize. So that's my first little criticism. Now, the second one, believe it or not, is right down here at the shifter. So you have the foot peg with the shifter and it looks wider on the camera than it really is in person. But I was wearing every other type of shoe while riding, say my sneakers or whatever. And the material from my shoes were getting stuck in between the shifter and the foot peg. So what I did was, is I decided to buy these. These are Skechers. Not that I'm trying to promote the Skecher company, but no laces, really thin shoes. And you can see, I've had these for three weeks and you can see that uh, that is my shifting foot, my left shoe. And you can see the worn in nature of the shifter there on the shoe. So I find these really easy to shift with. I only have an eight and a half size foot and these Skechers are perfect. I'm actually a former elementary school physical education teacher for 27 years. I have tied in my career thousands of shoes now that I've stopped teaching, I do not own any shoes or any type of footwear that have laces on them. Every pair of shoes that I own are slip-ons. So that is the classic 350. I also want to note that the rear passenger or the pillion seat has been removed for anyone who wants to purchase this i have to say that if you remove the rear seat it looks and i've had other people tell me this too it looks 1000 percent better than with the passenger seat on there so that is something to maybe take a mental note of. But yes, this is the Royal Enfield Classic 350. Fuel, well, if I'm on empty and I go to the gas station to fill up, only 93 octane I use. So from empty to full, I can get, uh, well, I've rode up to 225 miles. It probably could go longer than that. I just, when I hit the 225 mark, it is on the warning light again. And so I just fill it right up. That's excellent gas mileage. I believe this tank is less than three gallons. So you, if you can do the math in your head, uh, yeah, it's just excellent gas mileage, 225 miles. On a tank of gas now, there is the reserve and the display will show you trip F when it goes to that reserve. I've rode an extra 25 miles on there, but I've watched other reviews and one gentleman rode 40 miles on his reserve, so not to panic when it hits that warning light stage. So excellent on fuel. It is beautiful. Again, I just went over a couple of my little criticisms of it. But uh, yeah, this is the Royal Enfield Classic 350. And if you are a fan of the military and you have respect for those ladies and gentlemen, I would very definitely consider this the best looking motorcycle I've ever had. And I've owned several, so there it is.